Man, you need to come up a little bit, D. Mm. You off the screen. I'm not here. I'm just trying to get this That's over here. Right oh, what? I'm trying to cover that little thing right there. Mm. Let's get to it, man. You ready? I'm ready. Is you ready? Smack, is you ready? That's Bill. And that's Will. Man, today on the Bill and Will Show on this August the 12th, Wednesday. Man. Jesus, it's going by fast, people. Um, Man, we're going to talk about Dame hitting 61 yesterday, of course. We're going to talk about Deion Sanders uh, not working for the NFL Network. Um, we're going to have a mellow sight. He uh, moved to the 15th spot today in scoring. Uh, Giannis headbutt somebody yesterday. Man, we NCAA banned some football. Yesterday, we got a whole bunch of things to talk about. Uh, Gibson, what you want to start off with? <clears throat> Let's start with our boy, Dane. Dane. Dane, Dane, Dane. Went off. That's Bill. And that's Will. Today on the Bill and Will Show, we're going to talk Dane. Dame, Dame, Dame. After hitting 51 the other night, he came back and had a 61-point night last night. Uh, man, he's doing everything he can to get them Blazers in the AC, Gibson. I'm going to start out by saying this. Dame not getting the recognition from the NBA like, as he should. I don't know. You know, they talking about this person, uh, Giannis being MVP. They talking about uh, LeBron James being MVP. Uh, this guy, that guy, you know. But, man, most valuable player. Hey, it's hard to it's most hard, valuable right? player. I mean, if, if we want to go most popular, yeah, let's give it. Let's go ahead and give it to LeBron James. If we want to. We want to give it to a super athlete. Let's go ahead and give it to Giannis. But if we want to talk about the most valuable player to my team, I don't. I don't know how you could get. You know, Steph Curry. I don't know how you could get a more valuable player to your team, a more unselfish player. He hit those 60-something points because he needed to hit 60-something points. Mm -hmm. But if he had some help, if he had a if he had a Robin, it, it doesn't make sense, man. Dame, Dame, we're gonna do it. We're gonna we're gonna give Dame the the proper respect and accolades that he should get. He needs to be at the forefront of the MVP speculation. My boy is James Harden, but man, I can't I can't overlook what Dame is doing. 60, 52 one night, or 51 the other night. 51 the other night, came back two days later, said 61. Um, it's amazing what he's doing. He's willing his team to, uh, to victories right now. Uh, last night he did everything possible um, to win the game, and he won the game, which was amazing. He told y'all, y'all know what we're here for. Um, you know exactly why we're here. And uh, they wanted a chance going into the bubble, and they got a chance, and they're making they're making the best of it right now. His 50 to 60 point games. He's the first Blazer ever to hit back to back 50 point games ever. Um, he's solidifying himself and letting people know, man, I, I'm I'm that guy. And uh, right now, for for the season that they're having, for them to make the playoffs after Dame was hurt, after CJ was hurt, after uh, the two bigs for those who hurt most of the season. It's incredible what he's doing last night. And it's just, like I said, his, his will is just is unmatched in the NBA right now. It's, it's amazing. I don't know what else to say, but, you know, Dame, Dame is not only talking to talk, but he walking the walk. That's a big fact. So, um, y'all keep striving for the AC, Dame. I know y'all y'all play. Uh, we'll talk more about the, eight, the playoff game uh, in the West. Um, on another segment, but continue, continue to strive for more, man. You you out there, and it's crazy what you're doing every single day in the bubble right now. You definitely an MVP of the bubble, and you definitely should be an MVP conversation uh, for the season. Even though they got the finalists already, which is Giannis, Harden, and uh, LeBron, but uh, keep shooting. One more thing, AC. Whoever played them, nah, it's not gonna be easy out. You you cannot go into this series thinking, oh, we got the AC, we're gonna knock them out. You can't do that here. These guys, these guys right now, 
<clears throat> and it's so easy. If okay, Dame, we, he's on another level on that team. So let's let's take him to the side for the time being. And let's just say if five or six guys say, hey, you know what? Let's follow him. Let's go get it. And then you just do what you do. If you just say, hey, you know what? I'm going to get 20 rebounds tonight because I'm good at that. I've been getting 10, 11, but tonight I'm going to do 20. And get your mindset, I'm getting 20 bounds tonight. Another guy, I get two, three steals a night, but tonight I'm going to get five. Another guy, hey, you know what? I take the hardest guy, but I'm going to shut this joker down tonight. He's not going to get one point. If, if five or six guys just say, I'm going to get behind Dame and I'm going to, I'm going to run with Dame, I'm with him until the wheels fall off, I guarantee you, I don't know if they'll win the championship because they don't have enough. They yeah, enough horses in the race. They don't have enough. But I guarantee you, the first and second round, people that say, oh, we're going to get to the third round easy, and they play these guys, they're not going to be there. They're going to be sitting home with us watching the finals. There you go, man. Uh, Gary Trent Jr., uh, Whiteside, Nurkic, uh, CJ, uh, you guys, man, Melo, you guys come out and, and fight, man. They ain't going to be there. we seen y'all. Y'all all are already there anyway. Share up on the defense end, man, and help on the offense end. That's all you can do. Man. Ain't no need in us. Uh, skipping around, we might as well go straight to that that gun mellow. Be glad we, I'll be glad when he retired. Jeez. Why you hate? I'll tell you stuff. I'm, I'm, I'm not hating on. I just want him to go sit down somewhere. You gotta stop being. Get all that hate out your blood, man. That hate is going. It's, it's going to infect you, man. The hate. I'm all about love. <clears throat> stop hating on mellow. We're gonna get Carmelo Anthony, this joker here, man. Let's get it. That's Bill. And that's Will. Today on the Bill and Will Show, we're going to talk Melo. Like, comment, subscribe below, man. <laughs> man, I can't, I can't get this uh, Wale on chill out of my head, man. Where you <laughs> <laughs> I can't get it out of my head. I've been, I've been grooving on that today, man. But well, anyway. Melo's game has been on chill. Gibson, he's been chilling. He's been comfortable. He's got the most open shots he's ever got in his career, Gibson. Um, and he's coming in and he's knocking down shots. He had 20 the other night. Man, he um, he's looking rejuvenated, Gibson. And Jason Tatum, shout out to Jason Tatum, gave him a shout out for bid, for passing. I forgot who the 36-year-old Carmelo Anthony passed on the um, all-time list to get 15. But he did. I believe it was Paul Pierce. You talking about me on the all-time scoring list? All-time scoring list just passed Paul Pierce to take the 15th spot, Gibson. So let's oh, give it up for Melo. Wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait yeah, a minute. Wait Mello. a minute. Boom, 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 boom. You can't stay in the year. You can't stay in the league for 30 years and then pass somebody. It should. Be, you got to get capped off somewhere. If you just stay in the league and drag it out and stay 30 years, you are gonna be number one in the end. That ain't no compliment. Why are you job, clapping? Mello. Good job, Melo, for your compliment oh, going man. 15th, man. Uh, and it's going to continue to go, man. I, I think you can continue to move up this list, get to the top 10. We know you're one of the best scorers of all time, man. Uh, Bucket Melo. Um, so just continue to go, man. Jason Tatum, you young guy, he's a legend no matter what. He's a Hall of Famer no matter what. And y'all continue to understand that. Oh, uh, did you want me to say something? Hey, Melo, love, peace, and harmony, baby. You can talk if you want to hear about some cheetos. JB talking about, I, I'm going to get, I'm going to, JB talking about, what, why, why the old guy, he, he need to stop. Man, these old guys need to stop. You need to back me up, JV, and tell Melo to go sit down. Melo hooping, man. Melo hit some big shots the other night. Keep JV here. been awfully quiet. I've been riding him. But he ain't said nothing. That's Bill. And that's Will. Today on the Bill and Will Show. Like, comment, subscribe below wherever you want to, wherever it is down there. Um, We're going to go with throwback. Can we go throwback? Houston Oilers. Houston Oilers. Houston Oilers number one. Houston Oilers. Houston Oilers. 
Houston Oilers number one. Well, we're gonna talk to Houston Oilers man. Uh, Will Fuller, the wide receiver there, said. Um, he said without Bernard Hopkins, <laughs> Bernard Hopkins, without B Hop, his name Bernard. His, his name? name is DeAndre Hopkins. Without, without, Get it right. Without DeAndre. You're always Hopkins. disrespecting Houston, man. The Houston Astros, the Houston Texans. You know, the Houston Rockets, we get a lot of disrespect from you, man. He said the field is wide open now that uh, DeAndre Hopkins is not on the lineup anymore and it frees up the other wide receivers and it's going to be uh, catches and bunches for other wide receivers. You, you agree that they're a better Absolutely. wide receiving core without DeAndre? I don't, I don't know if they're better without DeAndre Hopkins. You know if they're no, better because they're I not. I don't know if they better. I wouldn't go that far and say they better. Yeah, they no, but he is correct. DeAndre Hopkins is here. The rest of the receiving core on the Houston Texans is here. So without him, everybody steps up one level or two levels. No, everybody has to step up. Don't mean they will step up. No, they, they were good receivers. They were all right receivers. No, they weren't all right. They were really good. If they were good, they would have been no, here. No, DeAndre Hopkins is on a whole other level. He's, he's by himself. I mean, on that team. Now, you, you got Beckham, you know, uh, Antonio Brown when he was playing. They got some guys that can go. Why does everybody say Antonio Brown? He ain't even played a whole season. Yeah, but he was a heck of a receiver when he was there. Yes, yeah, so everybody let's, let's knows. Let's talk that. about somebody who was a heck of a receiver. No, I just who mentioned play. I just he, Julio I, Jones is right there. Yeah, Julio Jones so mentioned say, him too. So say him before A B. Say the guys that actually played before A B, please. I don't know what you're talking about. But I'm gonna say this about my boy DeAndre Hopkins. Yeah, he was at another level. But now that he's gone you got the rest of the guys that can step up. They can catch and can. they can play. Can and they're going to do up. real well. They gonna do, you're going you're to see the next superstar in Houston right now. I don't know if it's going to be Will Fuller or uh, Cobb. I don't know who it's going to be, but one of them is going to step up and be their number one. I know that for well, you. You have fact. to be a number one. I mean, he's going to be here good you go with the, one. Here you go with the disrespect again. You don't have to be a number one. Just cause, no, just because you... Lose a number one, I mean, you gain a number one. Now you it's, got, not, it's not like they was garbage. Now you got a whole bunch of number twos out there floating around without a number one. It's not like it was garbage. It's just that DeAndre was at such a, another level, such a high level, that these guys couldn't get a, get their time to shine. But you're going to see it now. Well, you shouldn't have got rid of them in the first place. I believe that, too. Uh, you went out and you, you want to have your Belichick system, O'Brien. You want to do all of that. Now you're... Receiving court thinking there are a whole bunch of Terrell Owens and Ocho Cinco's when you got a whole bunch of Judy, oh. Judy Elements and uh, a whole bunch of Will Fuller can stretch the field. He can flat out go. Yeah, when well, he playing, when he when he's not he's hurt. hurt. He's been hurt. He's been hurt. I can't I can't say nothing about that he's been hurt. He need to get on the field and stay on the field. Now y'all, now y'all's uh, quarterback is amazing. He can make every throw in the book. So you gonna have a chance. Amazing. to. Amazing. You are gonna have a chance to catch the ball. Now will you do it? I don't know. Because you are Will Fuller and you're not Odell Beckham Jr. or you're not uh, D Hop or you're not Julio Jones. You're Will Fuller, and you have off, you have a uh, and you're not the best wide receiver on the field. Um, and that's that, man. Did you, didn't y'all pick up uh, old cat from uh, San Diego? I'm not sure. I thought y'all picked up Steals. We did, Kenny Stills. Kenny Stills is a really, uh, I like Kenny Stills. We got a but real have, nice receiving y'all, core. Y'all have a nice, y'all have all, y'all have number two receivers I'm not across a big, the board. I'm not a big O'Brien fan, but I, I do see where he's going with this. Yeah. I do see where I, he's going I, with this. I can see where he's going, you know, too. You but know? he should have done this years ago, because if I was the GM, he'd have been gone. Yeah, but I, I see what he's yeah. doing. I see what he's doing. He's he's trying to put together that Bill Belichick. I got a whole bunch of really nice Players, I don't have no superstars. I got a whole bunch of really nice players. I I, I see that. Oh, oh, Brian, your future unemployment, buddy. You, it's not gonna work. Oh, come on, man! I'm not wasting that young man's time out there. With speaking of group. speaking of that, they was talking about oh, we're gonna pay uh, five hundred million dollars to our boy from Lubbock, Texas. They think they're going to win a whole bunch of championships, but I'm going to tell you something, it's not going to happen. They overpaid for that, brother. Now, I'm glad he got paid because we need to get paid. He need to pay. They overpaid him. And I'm going to tell you why. Because they're not going to do what they think they're going to do. They think they're going to win four or five championships in the next ten years. That's what they think. 
Damn. It's not going to happen. I'm going to tell you why it's not going to happen. Greed. Greed. The reason the Patriots won all those championships is because they got a whole bunch of just really nice players on the team. And their best player always took pay cuts. Tom Brady. But guess what? Like Chris, the the lineman, uh, defensive lineman Chris, for the uh, Chiefs, he got paid. But guess what's going to happen? I want to get paid now. Chris Jones. Now, guess what's going to happen then? Well, we can't pay you because we gave Chris Jones a fat contract, and we gave um, the quarterback a fat contract. We can't pay you. Well, I'm leaving. Now they go as a player. Poker. You see that? I don't know why you're doing that. As a player, I'm just like, it's the bank in every city. That's one thing I don't worry about. You're going to get paid, baby. You're going to get paid, but you're not going to win no championships. You're going to get paid somewhere. Go for the guarantee. Now, how you gonna get to the Hall of Fame and you don't have a championship behind you? T.O. go. T.O. ain't in the Hall. T.O. go make the Hall of Fame. He ain't. A, he ain't a champion. He ain't got there yet. He been out the league. He gonna. He gonna be. A, he gonna be in the Hall of Fame. You gotta win the championship. That's the individual award. Teams don't go to the Hall of Fame. That was Houston. Yeah, I'm glad we offered them. I threw them in there to have, make you happy. That's Bill. And that's Will. Today on the Bill and Will Show. Like, comment, subscribe below. We're talking about Gibson. Let's go to that head butt. Head butt, man. Giannis, Giannis come on, man. Giannis, yesterday, man, head butted uh, Mr. Wagner from the Wizards. What's going on, Gibson? Come on, man. Bill, you think he's you think he's already in, in playoff form, ready to go? Don't mess with Giannis? He's in beast mode right now? Mm, no, that's not what he's in right now. He's off his rocker right now. Can't win a championship off your rocker. Now, I understand what's going on. It's a lot of pressure on him. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of pressure on him. He got to carry this team by himself, and I don't think that he's ready to carry a team by himself. Mm. You know, he's in the MVP talks. That right there, that hit, but that probably put him out of the conversation. The people got to vote, man. Who's voting? The South Side? No. Can't go and hit, but somebody and then win. The MVP of the league? The MVP of the league, with the, these these games right now are not determined in that MVP. It's everything that was before the bubble. So it's already, his uh, his catalog is already sealed up. He can't do more for that. Cap. It's just image. Now. Cap. And another cap. I guarantee you he won't win the MVP now. That's the headline. We're going to consider everything back there. So don't worry about what you're doing right now. Cap. No, he's not going to win the NBA championship. Why? Yeah. <laughs> he headbutted somebody. Not going to win. NBA There's a lot of pressure on this MVP? guy now. The weight. <laughs> MVP or championship? Both of them. Okay. He got he to gotta get his head on straight. You can't go around head, but this is not the WWE. This is not the old WWF. And you're not the world champion. He got a lot of weight on his shoulders. I'm trying to be the MVP. I'm trying to win a championship. The person got to me. I headbutted somebody and got ejected. So he's not going to win the MVP, but he still got a chance to win the finals. But he's going to play two really good teams from the West. Whichever one win the West, they're going to win the NBA championship. That's a fact. He's going to play one of two. He's going to play. Now, Philadelphia, not Philadelphia, the Bucks, they going to the championship. If you're going to stop headbutting people, they'll make it. But if he keep headbutting, they're not going to make it. But right now, they are shooting it. We're just waiting on the dominoes to fall all the way. We're going to put them in there. On the West, that's what's undecided right We don't know what's going to happen over there. Giannis. Giannis. And a Tacupo. What's, what's, what's good, B? <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know you have, I know you got a a, a, a wife and a, and a child at home that you miss greatly right now. You've been in a bubble, you got a lot of pressure on you, but B, what's, what's, what's all the head button about, man? <laughs> what, what the B mean? What is that? That's slang for? That's our New York slang. You oh, know okay. I'm from Texas, but hey, you know, like East Coast, you know, East Coast, my East See, Coast. See, if you call me B, I think you're calling me B for Billy. Oh, well, there you go, BG. B for Bill. But, yo, what's up, B? 
That's the, you know, my... I'm going to start. I'm, I'm going to do that York. when I go out. That's, that's, my New, that's my New York vibe. Yo, what's you know up, what I mean? B? <laughs> that's my East Coast vibe, but... <laughs> I'm looking at it, Giannis, and it's like, you look a little shaky, baby. Mm. 30, 30 points, 14 rebounds, 6 assists. That's good. Is that taking a toll on you every night to do that, baby? Because you going around headbutting people, and you, you was, you've been fired up. You got in somebody's face the other night. They had to restrain you. And now you you getting uh, kicked out the game for the third time in your career? Since, since the last time, I believe, was April 1st, uh, no, no uh, no April Fools. Twenty eighteen, I think that's the last time you got ejected. But you've been feisty a little here lately, man. Last two or three games. If you, are you ready for the playoffs to start? You getting your mentality ready? I don't know, man. But you, you, it ain't good for it to see it. when you start acting like that. When the best players start get kicked out the game, the second, the third, and the fourth best players are like, oh, I can act like that too. My, my, I'm following after my my captain. My captain get kicked out the game. Guess what I can do? I can I can headbutt somebody now. I can knock out professional now. You got a lot of people looking at you, Giannis man, and you need to keep your composure. And I know after the game, you wish you said you know it was a bad play and it was just whatever it was and it had nothing to do with anything. It was just uh, what's that thing, Gibson, where it just happens randomly and it won't ever happen again. Oh, an anomaly. Yeah, it was just an anomaly. It's just what it was. But no, nah, it's been brewing for a little bit. You looking for a fight, huh? And now you got he, some test, test, testosterone built up. You need a release. And normally your release is what you. So now he 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 is susceptible. They could get in his, under his skin real Ooh, easy. Yeah. So they tactic. playing. Boy, the game is on the line. They oh, say, hey, listen, go, grab him. go out there, man, and kind of you know rough him up a little. He gonna headbutt you, but we, we got we got you because we gonna pay for that. Don't worry about that. And then he'll get ejected. It'll be three minutes ago and we can win. He put his whole team in jeopardy. Um, he done fouled out numerous times this season. <laughs> Five times to be exact. I mean, he's also, he's, he's been in foul trouble a lot. If you've been watching the game with the Bucks. Oh, he uh, fouled out. He had two, he had, he's been, He's been a part of two replays where they got, they got switched over to where they let him stay in the game Ooh, and they reversed wait. the call. So you never know right now, Giannis. You in a you in a peculiar situation, man. You need to get your head on straight and go out there and do what you what we know you can do, man. You out there head, but that's not a good look for a Euro your Euros because we thinking the Euros gonna take over the NBA one day where they see a whole bunch of you. Black folks acting, you black euros acting like that thing. They gonna say y'all the same. We 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 expect this type of behavior from Ron Ron Artest and Steve Jackson and Melee in the Palace. You know what I mean? Not from you down in Orlando. Oh man, <laughs> I remember that boy. I I thought show sure, them two guys was out the league, man. Whatever, right? I was watching that game when it happened, and they was giving them two a hard time. This dude threw some. A drink or something on uh, Raw and Artest? Dang, dang, dang. Oh, man. I and then Raw and Artest ran, I mean, not Raw, but uh, what's the other guy's name? Steven Jackson. Steven Jackson ran way up in the state. He was way up there uh -huh. and punched somebody. If I was in the state, we would have picked him up and threw him right down 15 flights back to the floor. It you, was a melee, man. I would have ran up on one of them or I would have I, I tried to get hit. Get some, I'm suing, oh, that everybody, was I'm suing <laughs> everybody in the building. That was funny, man. I'm going to be the NBA logo like this. I could have swore that they was going to put them two dudes out the league. They basically did. They basically did. It's longer after that. Giannis got to get his head together, man. That yeah, man, he's an easy target now, man. He's an easy target. Head button. That's Bill. And that's Will. Today on the Bill and Will Show, like, comment, subscribe below. What we're going to talk, Gibson? Let's go to Prime Cut. Prime Cut, man. Deion, Can Deion Sanders has um, been cut, mutually parted ways with the, uh, with the, uh, what is that there, the NFL Network. Yeah, he Gibson. left the NFL Network. Um, you know, a long time ago, about 16 years ago, they tried to make a pay, make a pay cut. Mm -mm, he's not having it, and he left his former job with CBS Gibson. Um, he said he's getting into coaching. 
You think that's the better better option right now for prime time? Nope. <clears throat> I don't. Uh, Hall of Fame players make the worst coaches. Hall of Fame players make the worst coaches. Hall of Fame it. players make the worst coaches. Now, <clears throat> I've only seen a Hall of Fame player coach one time in all the sports, and it was successful. Larry Bird. There you go. Man. Oh, yeah. All of the rest of the uh, Hall of Fame coaches, it don't work. And I'm going to tell you why it don't work. But uh, do you know the black man for the Celtics won a championship being a coach and a player, right? Who? Uh, Doc Rivers? Doc Rivers never played for the Celtics, man. Who? Who was the big man? Bill Russell. One being a coach and a player. Okay, two Celtics. players. He was before my time. I wasn't even thinking about him. I thought y'all ran the same age. My bad, B. Okay, so I'm going to forget about Bill Russell because to me. Don't forget about not, it. I'm not, I'm, to the not, not, not that. Not that I'm disrespecting him, okay. but he played and coached in a different era. When, you know, Bill Russell was 6'11", and most of the guys he played with was 5'10". So I'm not, I, I don't even, I'm not going to take away 11 championships. I'm not going to do that. But we're going to cut that off right there. We're going to talk about the real athletes and what's really going on. The real athletes? You could have, don't say you've seen me, they on oh, my backhand slap, but you're going to say the real athletes like this man wasn't, uh, like, like this man wasn't going to, he could have been an Olympic athlete. The point guard when he was playing was 5'5", five, 5'6". Five, five, Bob Cousy, you talking about him? You could be a point guard at that height. Bugsy Moses. You know, height, but you can't do that now. See, it's just y'all. You're not gonna make the league at five six in the NBA now. I see what they're trying to do. They're trying to. They want to knock down statues. They want to knock take away history. Not include people that's supposed to be included. Goodness gracious! Let you BML people just ruin everything. Keep going. Sorry. Oh, okay. Now, now we back to the real topic. Here we go. So, this is why. Hall of Fame coaches don't make good coaches. When you're at that level, it's easy for you. If you Michael Strahan, you got 22 sacks. And a half. 22 and a half sacks, you know, and you're doing this consistently, it's easy. You wake up out of bed and get three sacks, four sacks in a game. That's easy. So when you go to coach, and you tell this guy, hey, this is how you do it, and he can't do it, that's frustrating to you. Like, I don't know why you can't do it. I did it. Why you can't do it? The best coaches, so let me go back. Let's reiterate. The, the, the Hall of Fame coaches, they can't relate to you because I don't understand why you can't do this. Michael Jordan would never be a coach. Even if he tried, he would fail miserably. But let me tell you something about Larry Bird. Let me tell you why he, what he did worked. Larry Bird came from Indiana. Larry Bird was poor. Larry Bird was shooting basketball in the back with a peach basket on the side of his barn. He didn't have a basketball, he used a tennis ball. And he was shooting that tennis ball out there in his backyard at the farm like this. He was poor and had a farm? Explain to me, please. How are you poor with a farm? Do we have to go? Do I, we need a history lesson? I want to know how you <clears throat> how you poor, but you own a farm. Okay, let's go back to slavery. No, no, this answer. And, is, and then that's no, working no, from no, slavery no, we to. forward. I just These to. guys came to America. This is all mine. Look at look at me. Look at me. I'm the captain now. Y yeah. Yeah. That's but, how you got the land, D. But but how is someone poor when they own B. a farm? Uh, B. <laughs> That's how they got the land. I just don't understand how I'm you... I'm the captain. I, look, look at me. Look at me. I'm the captain now. Listen, how are you poor you all on this a farm? Is, all this is mine. How are you poor you on a farm? Okay, so Larry didn't have nothing. He had a farm. But he didn't have nothing on the farm. They had a peach basket in a barn, and he was out there shooting. He wasn't out there plowing, because if he was out there plowing, he would have never been Larry Bird, Larry Legend. So he wasn't plowing, he was shooting basketball, he shooting tennis balls 
in a peach basket. Jimmy Butler was poor. Jimmy Butler is going to be a Hall of Famer. Jimmy Butler was poor. He didn't have a farm. So you know how you see this is you know, different? Hey. You see the difference? I, it's, a, it's, it's not a huge difference. It's a huge difference on the boat, they, I mean, on the ship that they got here on. But guess what? We all in the same boat. Larry Bird came from that uh, ship. Jimmy Butler came from this ship. But guess what? We all in the same boat now. What was that ship called that Larry Bird was on? Privilege? He was on the Mayflower. No, he was on the Privilege. <laughs> That's what he was on. So I'm trying to make my point. So he understands the grit and the grind. He understands that. This is I know why you can't hit this shot. Because you're not out there shooting 50 baskets before practice. 50 uh, shots during practice. 50 shots. After. That's why you can't hit the shot. Magic. Not Magic. Uh, Jordan, he, he, I'm, I don't know why you can't hit that. Everybody on the line, we're going to run. They, they can't coach because they don't understand why you can't do it. My turn? We only got 40 acres. And guess what happened to our 40 acres? Most of us didn't get to 40 acres. And the ones who did get to 40 acres, they got it taken away from them in the tax sale. So it was Poe. Poe. Uh, Deion Sanders, what we talking about? Still talking about Deion Sanders? We're talking about Deion Sanders going to coach. Is that a good move? No, it's not a good move. I know about, what happened. I was talking about Larry Bird. Because I'm, I'm showing you how uh, Hall of Fame players don't make good coaches. Um, so Deion, now Deion is going to coach them. Deion Sanders, guess what, buddy? I'm not taking no pay cut either. I'm not doing what I did for years and, and continue to do what I'm going to do and get paid less for it. I'm gonna go do something else. I'm gonna go get my time. I got a son that's uh, going to as a 2021 prospect for the draft. He was just working out with Tom Brady. I'm not worried about these people at CBS at uh, NFL Network. You know what? They're not fun league. You know they want him to do whatever he wanted to do anyway. Go coach. You can be a great coach, Deion Sanders. You're the most dynamic coach I've ever seen. I mean, player in my life. I seen you. I seen you one day go play, go score a touchdown. And then follow it up or go score another baseball or professional. You went from professional football to professional basketball. You and Bo Jackson, oh my goodness. That's so hard to do. So if you say you're going to coach, I believe you can coach. Say you want to go be a bassman, you can go be a bassman. If you go be a, if you're going to be a, a Marine in the Army at 53, I think you can go do that too. You can go do anything you want to put your mind to, Deion Sanders, man. Deion is 53? He's 53 years old. I'm older than Deion? Oh. You thought Dion, 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 Dion thought Dion was 61? I thought I was older than Dion. I mean, I thought I was younger than Dion. You thought Dion was 61? Mm-hmm. Hey, Dion, you prime time, baby. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, so this is what you're saying. I'm saying. I ain't going to take the pay cut. I'm going to go do something else. Okay, because guess what? We're not going to pay you this much money. If you want to stay here, you're going to make this much money. We're in a pandemic. There's hardly no sports being played. The sports that are being played are in a bubble. There's no fans there. There's no media. There's nothing. We can't pay you all this money. We don't have no money to pay you His that way. It's prime time. I don't care if it was prime ribs. We don't have the money to pay you right now. Oh. Football is about to get cut. They're going to shut down the NCAA. We don't know about the, uh, the uh, uh, NFL right now. I don't. I, we can't pay you, Dion. Now, you want to quit and go there? Guess what? You gave your own self a pay cut. You ain't going to go coaching or work. Why? Because they ain't playing either. Gibson. It's about principle. They not playing either, man. We, go, we can't turn, we can't name his, we can't name a premium. We can't cut his budget. He's prime. You know what prime time is? Everybody's means? taking pay cuts. Uh, yeah, have you heard uh, Tony Romo's going to pay cut? And he got 16, 17 million dollars. Have you heard someone say he's going to take a pay cut yet? He, he wasn't making the money Dion was making. He's the highest paid play, uh, sports person at $17 million. Gibson, have you heard a pay cut by Tony Romo? Is Tony Romo a Hall of Famer? Oh, without a doubt. Is he in the Hall of Fame? What does that have to do with anything, Gibson? Dion's a Hall of Famer and he's getting pennies compared to Tony Romo. Prime cut, Gibson. It's just a matter of time they're going to cut, uh, what's his name? We'll, we'll let them cut him first, and then I'll think about it. He's not on the NFL Network. <sighs> he on the he on CBS. And guess what? CBS got a lot of money because people still watching TV. But so you got to pay for the NFL Network. 
pay me my money. You got to pay. You got to subscribe to get the NFL Network. That's you can Bill. watch CBS for free. That's Bill. Bill. Man, that's Will. Today on the Bill and Will show, he's got done. Me, um, I'm done talking about the, uh, uh, prime time. Got he's the best to ever do it. Like, comment, subscribe below. What you want to talk about, Gibson? Extra clip. Extra clip. Montreal Terrell Gibson is a clipper that has, uh, has to bury his grandmother. Condolences to him and his family. And he's back, Gibson. A lot of people are saying that Montreal Terrell is the missing piece of the clip for success. Do you believe that one clip makes the difference? <laughs> um, he's not the key to their success. No, he's not the key. But if he comes back and, and, and he's able to get back to Montrez, uh, he's going to be all right. And the Clippers are going to be very difficult to beat. But he's not the key, though. Give him a little too much respect with that. I don't know what he's talking about, but Montrez... He brings a dynamic, a toughness to, a toughness to that team because he is the toughest player on that team in my eyes. He's the guy that um, sets the tone every night. He's the guy that does all the dirty work. Whatever you need to be done, he does it. Um, he's that Ben Wallace type of guy you need on your team. And he's 10 times better than Ben Wallace on the offensive end. <laughs> On uh, defensive end, it's hard to come up to that. But on offensive end, he's way better than Ben Wallace was. But as toughness-wise, they both at the same level, I believe, man. Montrez is. Oh, go, go ahead. Don't mind me. That's just these backhand slaps. <laughs> He's ten times better than, than Ben Wallace on the on the uh, offensive. Uh, <laughs> ten times. <laughs> yeah, I hate me. Oh man, you had me going. Go ahead. <laughs> Let me start I? start back with ten times better. <laughs> Woo, man, my eyes wide. I can't hardly see. Oh, okay, this is the Bill and Will show. Let me get right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, we all know he's coming off the bench averaging 19. Woo. Him and Lou is star studded off that uh off the bench. Um, and all you like, oh, you're talking about a bench player that's good. No, he's really that good. He allows uh him and Montrez Harrell, him and Lou Williams, the combination between Lou Williams and Montrez Harold off the bench allows Paul George and Kawhi Leonard to go sit down and not worry about being in that second unit. And they hold him down offensively. And Montrez brings that defensive toughness to help uh, Lou Williams out in that second unit. So I believe Montrez Hill is a big part of what they got going. I believe he brings that consistency that this team is lacking right now because they're up and down. They're late. They continue, they continue to fight. They show the pedigree of them fighting because every uh, when, when they are down in games, they find a way to muscle back, even though they, maybe they don't win those games, but they find themselves back in the game. I think Montrez is a big, really, really big piece to those game, uh, to the puzzle for those, for this team. Hopefully, we can see them get going in, in the last game here they got, and then in the first round series against the uh, against the Mavericks because they're going to need it. <laughs> <coughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So yeah, the Clippers. I, li I like Montreal. Montrez. Montrez Harrell, I like him. Where he go to college at, Gibson? But he's he's not the key to the team, but he is a a, a very important piece. You done with Montrez Harrell? I'm done with Montrez Harrell. <laughs> <laughs> he's ten times better. <laughs> On the offensive end, he's ten times better. Than oh, man, better. you be insulting these guys, man. You ben can't Wallace be talking about these good. guys. Uh, the man, Ben end. Wallace was, man, he was the... He was that team. He wasn't good. He was a cornerstone, team. man. Yeah, he wasn't that good on offensive end. That's Bill. And that's Will. And today on the Bill and Will Show, we're going to talk New York Jets. J E T S Jets. Boy, that, I, I put the Jets is supposed to be the New York Giants. Get God dog it. They, they play in the same house. Uh, what I want to talk about is how you how do you how do you think Jason Garrett. Being going from a head coach to a assistant 
uh, offensive coordinator, uh, assistant head coach. How do you think that's going to play out up there in the Giants? Wait a minute. I thought he went to the Giants as the head coach. No, he went as the OC. He go. He went. He went to be the underboss. How do you? What's that dynamic? that you feel going from the boss now to being the underboss? Very difficult. It would be difficult for most people. Jason Garrett, his personality is such that he just want to get in where he fit in, and he's going to do a good job wherever he goes. Now, he, he wasn't able to take the Cowboys over the top, and he had, a, he had a, a plate and a table full of goodies. He had, man, I'm telling you, and, 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 and what is that, Jerry World? On that table, that spread, he had turkey, dressing, peach cobbler, he had uh, sweet potato pie, he had all kind of stuff on that table, and he couldn't get the job done. He Now, he's going to a New York Giants team that's decimated. Now, they got a few good pieces. They got a really good running back from Penn State. They got a couple of good receivers, and they, they got some questions at the quarterback, but... What's the question? Danny Dimes is their quarterback. What's the question? What's he going to do? But there ain't no question about who their quarterback is. Well, I'm talking about there's questions of is he going to be good or not? Is he going to be able to run the offense mm -hmm. that uh, Jason Garrett is going to employ? It's, I mean, I don't know. And you don't either. But this is what I do know. Jason Garrett is not a winner. He's a survivor. He went to Princeton. He's smart. He's very intelligent. He's a survivor, but he's not a winner. He's not a champion. They're not going to do nothing with him as an offensive coordinator. <sighs> well, when you hit, when you when you're coaching for somebody that's younger than you, when you're working for somebody that's younger than you, they kind of get under your skin a little bit. Um, we all know Jason Garrett has been one of the highest paid assistant coaches or assistant coordinators. Offensive coordinators before with the with the Cowboys before he took the job he was highly paid then they brought him in as a head coach so he has experience being offensive coordinator somewhere not being the head man so he falls back into that role which in a lot of people's eyes he shouldn't have been the head coach of the, of the Dallas Cowboys he was uh he was groomed by Jerry Jerry loved him um, so he, he married his daughter uh, he was knocking off his daughter he married his daughter don't say it like that that's how we talked about it. New York, that B, yeah, B he, wasn't doing that. He was knocking off, and then they got married. That's what happens when you knock off something. You know what I mean? I <laughs> that. Uh, and they got married, <coughs> so yeah, he knows about like. But I agree with you. Said he's not a guy that willing to stick his neck out that hole to see if somebody comes. You know what I mean? He gonna make sure it's all. It's a clear path for him to get a nice. You know what I mean? Because he has. It's not gonna work. He thinks it's not going to work there. Uh, I'm not a Giants fan no way, so I don't I care. I think no matter who your offensive coordinator was or your coach was, your roster's depleted, like Gibson said at the beginning. You do have Saquon, which if you're smart, you don't run Saquon as much. You keep him between 15 and 17 carries a game because you want to try to get right, get your organization right, get more better players around Saquon because one missed block, one missed tackle, if you use him 30 times a game, his career's gonna be over and you're gonna have nothing. You're gonna be less of a running back. Danny Dimes, he is a question. Uh, if he can stop turning the ball over, he'll be all right. If he can uh, continue to improve like he did last year, he did. You've seen some strides in Danny Dimes. You didn't see enough of it. You just seen him continue to turn the ball over in clutch minutes. So I think, uh, I think uh, with, a, with quarterback experience like Tony Romo and Dak Prescott under the coordinator uh, of the OC's belt, I think he can help him in, that, in those ways also. But as far as the Giants sneaking up on anybody or winning the division, winning the East, um, they, they, I don't see. I see them behind the Cowboys. I see them behind uh, Philadelphia, and I see them fighting with the Redskins to see who's the sorry. Dead last, you know. I like Daniel Jones better than I do Danny Dimes. Um, Daniel Jones is Danny Dimes. You got to get on the hip hop scene, and you know what I mean. Hey man, I don't, you know that slang language. <clears throat> doing.
Danny Dimes. I wouldn't even be calling him Danny Dimes. That's what he called him. That's, that's his name. Houston, I'm, I'm sorry that we can't accommodate you on that front. That's Bill. That's Will. And today on Bill and Will Show, like, comment, subscribe below. What are we going to talk, Gibson? What is that? The hard, hardest? The hardest? The hardest, Gibson. Um, Cormier, Daniel Cormier was asked, does he think uh, Gaethje is... Uh, like, comment, subscribe below, people. We're going to talk to UFC. Oh, man. And we're going to talk about Gaethje versus Khabib. And is this the hardest fight that Khabib has ever faced? No. I don't even know why. I don't even know why Cormier thinks that. I don't even know why he said that. Why would he be the hardest test for Khabib? That don't even make sense. But anyway, <clears throat> let's go ahead and talk about it. Since we're talking about it, I don't agree with uh, Daniel here. I don't agree with it at all. Gaethje, yeah, as long as they're standing up, Gaethje's going to be uh, a tough competitor for. Uh, could be, but just like, you know, uh, I drew a blank. What's the guy from Ireland? Conor. Conor McGregor. Just like Conor McGregor, he was he was a tough stand-up guy, you know, and he could drop dimes on your chin in a heartbeat. So all you got to do is take him down. It ain't like Gaethje can't be taken down. It ain't like Gaethje, I don't know. Gaethje's a tough fighter, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that. But I'm not going to go so far to say that Gaethje is Khabib's toughest fight. I ain't, ain't going to say that. I think I think his toughest fight was against Conor McGregor. I think his toughest fight was against life. Is that right, Khabib? You went through way more stuff in life than these people that they put in front of you in the ring. They, they, they pose no obstacle. He grew up with nothing in Kazakhstan. He didn't have. Russia. He didn't have no land. A he, farm? he had no farm. He had nothing. We had nothing. He didn't have weed. We didn't have nothing. 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 You grew up in Kazakhstan? No, I grew up in Midland. I had nothing. Same thing. Oh, life. same thing. Okay. We grew up in the streets fighting. Okay. He, he did that. I did that. Okay. That's what you got to go through. And you think that somebody in Octagon? I just he just lost his father. You think that battle right there ain't harder? This ain't hard for him. This man is built different. He gonna grab on to Gaethje, and Gaethje gonna wish, he gonna wish that he never got into the ring with this man. He gonna tap out? Tap out, pass out, <laughs> knock out. Get out. He, exactly. Yeah. Gaethje, yeah, you wanted this fight, but you ain't gonna last this fight, man. It, it's not the toughest fight, it's just the next fight. And your next fight is always your toughest, so I agree. It is his toughest fight because all the rest, he's already passed. He's on to Gaethje, and on the October the 24th, everybody gonna see why the Madoff, the Mega, you can't even say his name, he's so hard. <laughs> yeah, come here, I don't know why he said that. October the 24th, you're going to see Khabib and why he's the 155-pound best to ever do it at that weight because he's going to go in there with a plan. He's going to go in there. He's going to latch on to Gaethje, and Gaethje is going to, he's going to, he's going to fold up. You can't do nothing under that pressure, man. Well, <clears throat> I know that uh, Cormier and uh, Gaethje, you know, they're on the same team, and that's probably why he said what he said. But, no. Mm -mm. Hey, man, I'm looking forward to that fight in October, man. It's going to be seven days before Halloween, so some crazy stuff might happen. Hopefully we get to see the fight. But um, no matter what, y'all go out there and be safe. Because you're going to need you got uh, you gonna need it. Gaethje, you're going to need it. Good thing about, though, when he gets to the ground, it's just going to be submissions. He might just knock your arm. It ain't going to be no brutal punches to your face, at least. Yeah, because Khabib is not a puncher. Yeah, he's he's, he's going to grab you and throw you to the ground. Football. And we didn't record none of that, Gibson. That wasn't recording at all. What? You, you were supposed to check the record, but...
That's Bill. And that's Will. Today on the Bill and Will Show, we're talking the Pac-10 <laughs> and the Big Ten. It seems like it's, uh, what's that, Groundhog Day? Groundhog Day has been canceled. Hey, man, uh, no more football. The Big Ten, Pac-10, uh, Big 12, Pac-10, whatever you want to call them, they, they uh, postponed it. So they're going to try to probably ramp it up in the spring. And all you guys looking forward to the NFL, sorry. Because you're probably going to have uh, bowl games in, in uh, late winter, early spring. Good luck with the combine. These guys will. It's the Big Ten and the Pac-12. It ain't a bunch of guys going to the NFL on those teams. No way. What are you talking about? So if they are going to the NFL, just go ahead and go to the NFL. You got you got a top uh, in Ohio State. You got Michigan. You got you got. They're uh, not going Washington. right now. You got the, UCLA. The best player's not going right now. What you mean? Like their quarterback. They feels. feels he going. He, he gonna be a top two draft pick. What you yeah, mean? If, if he came out, but he's a, he's a sophomore, or junior. He is gonna come out. No, he's a, he's a eligible to, to come out to the but draft. But he don't have to come out. He, but he is gonna come out. When you nobody wanna stay in college okay, longer than what you have to. Okay, if he if he wants to come out, come on out. He's gonna be a pick top pick anyway. I agree with so you. So what difference does it make if he play? He probably don't want to play anyway because now I might get hurt. This, this way, I'm sure not to get hurt. Big Ten says safety's always been first. But what it seems like is the by playing these games and cooperating with the players and making everything look right, this going the money in that is gonna be a little bit more. But if they don't have fans in the stands, who cares? Because the athletes they're not gonna get the COVID virus. They got even, fans. even if they did get it, like Texas got a big breakout, Michigan State got a big breakout, and a, one other team got a big. But you know, so what? These are athletes. They're in great shape. Nothing's gonna happen to them. Till somebody 14, 14, dies, 14, it ain't gonna die. If somebody dies, guys are young, man, 18, 19, 20 years old, big and strong and burly. They're gonna shake off that COVID. Which, I, and I, I, maybe they can. But they ain't what, gonna do nothing. But what if somebody does pass? A dog died in North Carolina. Who cares? A, he had the COVID virus in North Carolina. Peter, Peter, he didn't mean that. Peter, he didn't mean that. We care about dogs here at the Bill and Will Show. I just said I didn't care, but he died. Yeah, but you got to care when a dog died. Rest in peace, dog. Whatever his name was in North Carolina, rest in peace. His man. name is Dog, and he died. Who cares? He died. But the as, dog wasn't as, in shape. As, Why? Because the dog was eating table scraps. He belonged to a black person? Because you know we feed table scraps to the dog. He should have been eating dog food. We don't got no money for no dog food. Well, he died anyway, so... Anybody can die, even a dog. So we not gonna we not gonna worry about that. The SEC, I'm waiting on y'all to see uh, to y'all's uh, announcement of if y'all gonna play or not. Y'all are headstrong right now. We know Donald came out and, and, and said, "Hey, we need football." And you said that you agreed with Donald Trump about something. Yeah, he something. said the athletes are you strong. You agree with Donald Trump I agree about with, something? I agree with Donald Trump in this. So in this Peter result. and uh, Dem and the Democrats gonna uh, not like us. Come on, tell us what he said. Donald Trump said these are athletes. They are the finest human specimens on the planet. They're big and strong and burly. They're in shape. They got a great diet. Even if they did get the COVID virus, ain't nothing going to happen to them. Play that, ball. That sounds like one of them options. Look at this one here. He's strapping. <laughs> He's strong. He fit. He can do good work. <laughs> That's what he said, and I agree with him. Man, I don't want to hear what it. did Nick Saban say? Nick Saban, hey, Nick Saban said, look, they, they safer on the football field than off the football field. There you go. He said on campus is where they're going to catch it at. On the football field is where they're going to catch them. Eat that W. Like James Winston said, they're going to get them Ws. And James they're going to play. Winston. So Nick 30, Saban 30. spoke. I think they're going to play, Gibson, the SEC. You know, the South, they always been on headstrong and do what they want to do. Oh, Clemson had a big outbreak. Texas and Michigan State had big outbreaks. Clemson sucks when it comes to, um, I can't even lie, Clemson's a really good program, Gibson. We got three championships in the last four years. Y'all got two, stop it. Three from, man, y'all got three championships, man. Y'all ain't that good. Y'all got two we championships. You beat LSU last year. Y'all lost to LSU. You remember we beat Alabama? Y'all lost to LSU. Stop it. Trevor Lawrence. Yeah, Gibson, that was race for A. We oh got the last race for one. A. 
I thought that was Dane. That's Bill. And that's Will. Today on the Bill and Will Show, Gibson, we're going to talk race for eight to end the show. Man, it's coming down to four teams for that last two spots, Gibson. We, you know, we have the Memphis Grizzlies in oh, eighth right now. there ain't no race. We got Portland, we got Phoenix, and we have San Antonio. Uh, we know last night after Damian's win, had 61 points. If they win on Saturday, I mean, if they win on Thursday, they control their own destiny and they get their eighth spot, meaning that they they only they only have to win one game to make it to the playoffs to play the Lakers, Gibson. Um, you got Phoenix there. They have to win and hope which they're undefeated right now in the bubble. They have to win and hope for help, all, as does the San Antonio Spurs. Um, Memphis will keep that last eight spot if, with the win and a, in a with the with the win or with the win and the Portland loss. Um, who do you think is taking these two last two spots? Gibson? Memphis got Job Morant. Who gives a sh he's the he's probably the third best player on on each of these teams if you put the t players together. But he is in the top spot of these three teams. He's no, he's, he's not. He's the ace spot. Man, yeah, he's in the ace Portland, spot right now. Phoenix and San Antonio are fighting for that spot. Facts. So Ja Morant is on top of the hill right now. He can flat out ball. I don't think John Moran's on the top of the hill. I think right now you have in this group of four, he is. I think Port there he is right there. I think I think Portland is at the top of them. I think they're at the top, but they getting stalled out for they need food. They ain't got no food <laughs> up at the top of the mountain. They got no they ain't got no, no water. water up there. They just up there looking to die now. No no supplies. They got nothing up there. That's the part. They got the high ground, which is great, but now we just smoking them out. They're getting smoked out. They position. And Memphis has been in that spot for a minute. They're not giving up nothing. They give some they, But they've been losing. Our boy. Dame time if has they, been if, lights out. If Dame wins, Gibson, they overtake that, that mountain. They they in the HC. If they win, they control their own destiny through and through. That's amazing. It's you can't be, beat that. It's gonna be tough, man. You can't beat that. The uh, Phoenix continues to win. I want Portland to win because that's our guy from Weber State. But, man, I don't know. The percentages are in Dane's favor right now, man, to win that game. I don't see them losing. Are they going to play Memphis at all in no. these last few games? No, they don't. Uh, mm -hmm. The Spurs play the Mavericks. I mean, the Spurs play the Suns. I think Portland comes out and they got to play the Rockets. No, or somebody, or someone like that. Mm -hmm. I don't know who they got to play. They might not do it. Who might not do it? Portland. They might not do it. You sound like you don't know what no, you're talking I, I about, like, man. I like Portland. I like Dame, and I want them to win, but they got some tough games, man. If they play Houston, they got two juggernauts over there. And Gibson, they don't. And if they hadn't traded Clint Capella, whew. I'm trying to find out who they play in the last game. I can't find it, but um, I know it's not anyone that Dame can't knock off because he's been knocking off everybody. So I'm looking forward to whoever they play, man. I think uh, it's going to be a great game to watch. Right now they're in playoff mode no matter what. They've been in playoff mode for a while now. So um, I see the Memphis Grizzlies playing the Portland Trailblazers. The Trailblazers getting one win and then going to play the Lakers, knocking off the Lakers, then going in the second round, knocking whoever they play in the second round, then knocking off where they play in the third round and winning the championship. I told you all that at the beginning of this pandemic year and I'm sticking to it. Go watch our old videos. I said Portland gonna win a championship this year and they are gonna win a championship this year. Okay listen before we go I, I need y'all watching send me one of those thermometer things that, that you put on the forehead and see because this dude right here he got a fever. Yeah I got COVID. You might have the COVID. I'm young and strong, so I ain't gonna, I ain't worried about it. You ain't gonna give it to me. Even if you did, I'm gonna shake it off. That's Bill. And that's Will. And that's our program for the day, August the uh, uh, 12th today. Man, y'all go out there, have fun day. Enjoy yourself. Be safe. Um, be safe. Comment below on the videos, man, and we'll see y'all next time. Deuces. Peace, B. With you.